In this next section, we'll introduce the very important concept of Markov equivalence and give the main theorem around independence-based causal discovery and what it has to do with Markov equivalence. So here we have a chain graph going to the right, a chain graph going to the left, and a fork graph. Recall that we first saw these structures back in week three, and we saw what conditional independence assumption these graphs imply, given the Markov assumption. That's that x1 is independent of x3 conditional on x2. In all three of these different graphs, this is the case. And minimality also told us that x1 is dependent on x2 and x2 is dependent on x3. Here, faithfulness will be guaranteeing that x1 is dependent on x3. Minimality didn't quite guarantee this because there can be some intransitive cases. But the main thing you can focus on here is just the, what the Markov assumption tells us. The thing I want to emphasize here with the fact that I put these three graphs on the same slide and say they all imply the same conditional independence, given the Markov assumption, is that these three graphs are Markov equivalent. That's just what we mean by they imply the same conditional independence assumption. And some other terminology that we'll be using is that they're all in the same Markov equivalence class. That's a class of graphs that all imply the same conditional independencies. So that's chains and forks, but immoralities are a bit special, if you remember from back in week three. Here I've just copy and pasted the chains and forks Markov equivalence class on the right here, where I have this blue circle around it to indicate that this is a class of graphs, a set of graphs. Unlike chains and forks, immoralities have this interesting property where x1 is independent of x3 conditional on nothing, right? So this property does not match the chains and forks one, where we have to condition on x2 to get independence. Otherwise, they're dependent. And with immoralities, x1 and x3 are dependent if we do condition on x2, right? So it's kind of like the reverse of what's going on here in the chains and forks. So this means that immoralities are outside of the Markov equivalence class for chains and forks. And they're in their own Markov equivalence class. So unlike chains and forks, if you're an immorality, then you're single in your Markov equivalence class. So if we can somehow figure out the Markov equivalence class when the true graph is the basic immorality here, then we can actually identify the full graph. So once we know this blue circle, and because there's only one graph in there, we've identified the causal graph as the basic immorality. Whereas if we just figure out the Markov equivalence class for when the true graph is a chain or a fork, then all we know is that it's one of these three graphs. We don't know which one it is. Okay, so that's the sort of special information that immoralities tell us, but chains and forks must also tell us some useful information that we can leverage in causal discovery. And that has to do with skeletons. So the skeleton of these three graphs here, the two chains and the fork, is this graph, where the way we get a skeleton is just by turning directed edges into undirected edges. So you can check that for these three graphs, if we turn the directed edges into undirected edges, they all give this same skeleton. And the information that this skeleton tells us is that x1 is independent of x3 conditional on x2. That's in contrast to a graph like this one, which is the chain where we've added an edge from x1 to x3. In this graph, x1 is still dependent on x3, even after we condition on x2, because there's, there's this direct edge from x1 to x3. Okay, so this graph here is outside this Markov equivalence class, and we can tell that based on the fact that it has a different skeleton than the chains and fork have. So the skeleton of a graph tells us some useful information about the Markov equivalence class as well. So there are two important qualities of graphs that we can use to distinguish graphs from each other 
based on the conditional independencies that they encode. And that's immoralities, which we saw a couple slides ago, how those are special. And the skeleton of a graph, which we saw on just the last slide. So we've built up intuition for these two things on the previous two slides, and that leads us to this very important theorem, which is that two graphs are Markov equivalent if and only if they have the same skeleton and the same immoralities. If you think about this a bit and realize you have no intuition for this, then I recommend going back to slides and rewatching that bit on why immoralities are special and then on skeletons. And then, why do we care about this theorem? Like, what, what does it do for us? Well, it tells us that if we're trying to infer the graph from just conditional independencies that we find in the data, then the best we can do is discover what's called the essential graph, which is just the skeleton of the true graph plus the immorality. So take the skeleton of the real graph, and then orient the edges of the immoralities. This sort of partially directed graph is what we can expect to discover from independence-based causal discovery. Another word for this is CPDAG, where CPDAG stands for completed partially directed acyclic graph. Not all of the edges will be directed. And this essential graph, or CPDAG, you can think of as a sort of graphical representation of the Markov equivalence class. We'll see an algorithm for discovering this essential graph, or this Markov equivalence class that we can actually infer from data based on conditional independencies in the data. But before we do that, let's make sure that this Markov equivalence stuff is clear and go through a few questions and examples on it. The first question is, what graphs are Markov equivalent to the basic fork graph? The second question is, what graphs are Markov equivalent to the basic immorality? The answers to both of these two questions are in a few slides ago, so go ahead and check those out if you can't quite recall the answers. Then the next question is, what graphs is the following graph Markov equivalent to? So basically the way we'll do this is just try to flip edges and see if we get graphs that still have the same skeleton and immoralities. We're going to ensure that we have the same skeleton by just flipping the edges and then We'll make sure we don't introduce any new immoralities or get rid of any. This graph doesn't have any immoralities, so we just need to not introduce new immoralities. So the first graph this is, this is Markov equivalent to is if we flip the A to B edge. Note that if we had flipped the C to B edge, then we would introduce an immorality. C to B and then A to B would be an immorality. So that's a graph that this graph is not Markov equivalent to. Okay, so here's one that we saw it's Markov equivalent to, and then there are two more. Another is if we take this graph and then we flip the C to B edge. And then finally, there's this graph where the D to B edge is pointing to B, and then the other two edges are pointing outward. So again, for example, if we were to take this graph on the right here and then flip the AB edge so that we have it pointing from A to B, then we'd be introducing a new immorality. So that graph would not be Markov equivalent to these four graphs. It would be in a different Markov equivalence class. The next question is, what graphs is the following graph Markov equivalent to? This is a bit of a trick question in that this graph is alone in its own Markov equivalence class. So that's because it's engaged in an immorality. This A to C and then B to C is an immorality, which means that this graph will be alone in its Markov equivalence class. So to see that, let's consider what would happen if we flipped edges. If we flipped this AC edge so that we had 
an edge from C to A, then we would get rid of this immorality. And so then it would be a different, uh, it would imply different conditional independencies based on that theorem. Remember, we have to keep the skeleton and the same immoralities. Same if we were to flip this CB edge. And then finally, if we flipped this DC edge, so that we it went from D to C, then we would have new immoralities, right? Then we'd have this immorality, D and B would have a, this child together without being uh, connected. And then also A and D would have C as a child together without being connected, right? So there'd just be immoralities all over the place. But importantly, we needed to have only this immorality, the A and B as a immoral parents of C. We can't have D jumping in there making things uh, more immoral. As according to the theorem, that would give us a graph that is not Markov equivalent to this one. And then the final question is this one, where I, I'm just asking you to give a few graphs that the following graph is Markov equivalent to. I won't actually give you the answer for this one, so go ahead and pause and take a think here. <laughs> 